Hello and welcome to Newsfeed on Trust TV. I am Sumaya Abubakar, taking you through the stories trending online that people are talking about and sharing around the globe today. Chimamanda Ngozi Adichie writes open letter to Joe Biden about Nigeria's election. Council of Elders of Ohaneze Ndibu Worldwide has urged President Buhari to bring to the book all those who played roles in the distribution of Igbo properties destruction in Lagos State. Plateau State Police Command paraded a security guard who killed a 32-year-old Ruth Yakadi Bago in Jos. And Taliban others bars Afghan women from working with UN. Now, top of what's trending today, we have Chimamanda Ngozi Adichie, who has written an open letter to the President of United States of America, Joe Biden, about the recently concluded election in Nigeria. In the letter titled, Nigeria's Hollowed Democracy, and published on the Atlantic, the author um, questions why Americans are congratulating, you know, the winner of Nigeria's election in February. Adichie points that following the passage of the 2022 Electoral Act in Nigeria, which gave legal backing to the vote counting process nigerians trooped you know out to vote on the morning of february 25th she says what followed was a breach of that trust when on february 26th social media became flooded with evidence of voting irregularities numbers crossed out and rewritten some originally written in blank ink you know had been rewritten in blue some blunderingly whited out with tip x adeche adds the election had been not only rigged but done in such a shoddy shabby manner that it's insulted you know the intelligence of nigerians adichie then proceeds to question the u.s state department's response in congratulating tinubu and accepting the election result so biden adichie writes you have spoken to the importance of you know global community for democracy and the need to stand up for justice and the rule of law and netizen you know praised this woman impact so much wisdom Another wrote, if elections are conducted again, I think Peter Obi will lose. Not everyone voted for him. And another said, well, that is your opinion. All we need now is to continue to pray for Asiwaju to deliver the dividends of democracy to Nigerians. Do not heat up the polity. Asiwaju has come to stay for the next four years. Next on what's trending, we have the Council of Elders of Ohane Zeindib Worldwide has urged President Muhammadu Buhari to bring to book all those who played roles in the destruction of Igbo properties in Lagos State, condemning the spate of ethnic profiling of the Igbos in Lagos and other parts of Nigeria. The Council reminded Nigerians and the relevant authorities of the event were similar to what triggered the 30-month civil war that claimed the lives of millions of Nigerians. The elders in a communique um, issued at the end of the you know its emergency virtual meeting held on wednesday april 15th uh, 5th rather 2023 which was made available to journalists in enugu on thursday 6th april had in attendance members from nigeria the united states of america the united kingdom italy and other parts of the world it's directed ohaneze indigo in collaboration with the council to set up a committee of inquiry to carry out a full investigation into the destruction of properties and assets of indigo in Lagos. Lagos. It also sets up an emergency telephone line where the Igbos in Lagos could make reports in case of any attack. According to the resolution, the emergency council meeting was convened to review the Igbos' painful and agonizing experiences in Lagos during the recent general elections. An artisan commented, the government of Lagos should protect lives and properties of citizens despite the tribe. A guy said, tomorrow now we will hear again that they said a different thing altogether. Please, how many Ohaneze in Debo do we have? And another said, please, these Ohaneze don't represent Igbo race. Rather, they represent their pockets. Next on what's trending, we have Plateau State Police Command who had paraded a security guard who killed a 32-year-old lady identified as Ruth Yakadi Bako in just North local government area of the state. It was reported that late Ruth, a Unijos graduate, was stabbed, raped and killed and her property carted away at Angwanjarawa in Faringada area of just in December 2022. Addressing newsmen on Tuesday, April 4th, 2023, the State Commissioner of Police, C.B. Bartholomew Onyeka, who spoke through the spokesperson of the command, DSP Alfred Alabo, said that after the dastardly incident, the police operator of the Laranto Division of the command, led by CSP Pam Dauda Ishaya, swung into action and arrested one Emfrem um, Emmanuel of Angwanjarawa Farangada and just with the victim's phone. He added that upon interrogation, the suspect 
disclosed that one Friday, Samson of the same address sold the phone to him, adding that the further investigation led to the arrest of Samson, a choir master who confessed to having raped and killed Ruth. Speaking to newsmen, the 29-year-old suspect, a father of two, said he raped and killed Ruth after she refused to sleep with him. According to the accused, he cited her descent from a commercial vehicle late in the night after closing from work and followed her to a secluded area where he raped her after much struggling. A netizen wrote, stricter punishment case, you know, for cases like this. Life for a life. A lady commented, it is just so exhausting reading about human wickedness daily, so triggering too. Another said, how did their conversation begin or started in the first place? It is not everyone you lower yourself for, all in the name of greetings. That usually warrants insults. Next on what's trending, we have suspected political thugs, you know, ha who have allegedly invaded the national headquarters of the Labour Party LP in Abuja. The national chairman of the Labour Party, Julius Abure, disclosed this on Thursday, April 6, 2023. According to Abure, the suspected political thugs have broken into the national headquarters of the party. The LP National Secretariat is located in Utako District near the Federal Capital Territory Office of the National Union of Journalists, NUJ. This comes 24 hours after Justice Hamza Muazu of a Federal Capital Territory High Court issued an order restraining the National Chairman of the Labour Party, Julius Abure, National Secretary Farouk Ibrahim and two others from parading themselves as national officers of the party. The judge issued to restrain an order while ruling in an ex parte application filed by a James Onoja. In an application, Onoja told the court how the restrained national officers allegedly forged several documents of the FCT High Court to carry out unlawful substitution in the last general election. Take a look at the clip of Abure talking about the invasion. The Labour Party office is under attack. All the doors at the national headquarters have been broken and they have entered the office purportedly trying to hold a meeting in the office. That meeting is not authorized by me, it's not authorized by the National Working Committee. The Labour Party is under serious attack. Personally and individually, because of the case we have against the APC in court, all of this black day, all of this attack is tailored towards destroying the mandate that has been freely given to us by Nigerians. Nigerians must rise to the occasion, defend their country, defend democracy, and defend the Labour Party. Someone commented, they break the doors and windows, and it looks like they wanted to hold a meeting there. Where is the video, and how do you know that they are APC? A guy asked confused people, why mention the APC in your internal fight? Was it APC that took you to court? And a lady said, it is time for military takeover. What nonsense democracy? Is this democracy? Well, be careful what you wish for, I would say. Now let's take a short break. And when we come back, you will see the heartwarming reception that we do received in the UK. Stay tuned. Welcome back. It's News Feed. A viral video of Davido getting lots of love on the streets of London. Take a look at the video. A lady said, it is the lady running around for me. The picture must be clear. <laughs> another said, the joy this guy carries around needs to be studied. He was truly missed. And another lady wrote, David is the only African celebrity that will make me lose my home training, old woman like me. When he was still living in Lekki, I used to park by the side of his house. I would join those children that usually stand in front of his house just to look if I will see him come out because my house was not far from his house then, just because he's a good person and I like good people. 
Next on What's Trending, we have Justin Dean, who tells followers who think Cora's new house is a mansion, not a condo. Justin Dean has shot down claims that his ex-wife Cora Obedi's new house is a mansion. He went online to search for the difference between a mansion and a condo while reading it out to followers. He pointed out that a mansion has more rooms and sits on more square feet. He then explained that his house is almost a mansion as he shot down claims that he is jealous of Cora for buying a house. Take a look at what he had to say. Why would I be upset that they have more room to, to roam? Seriously. Your mind is sick. Condo versus mansion. Everyone's talking about a mansion. So let's define what a mansion is. How many square feet to be considered a mansion? Let's attack this from an educational standpoint, because a lot of you are just throwing random things out on the internet and your ignorance is showing. The lady said, but where did Cora see this white man that does not have sense and married him? Another lady said, she is not competing with you, man. She is happy winning. Condo or mansion, her peace of mind is all that matters. Continue looking for the difference. Someone added, this is obsession and he is pained that Cora is not begging him and crying for food or money. I'm glad she left him. Next on what's trending is the Taliban who had reportedly extended a ban on women working for NGOs to the special United Nations mission operating in the country. A UN spokesperson announced calling such an order unacceptable. While no written order from Taliban authorities had yet been received by the United Nations assistance mission in the Afghanistan, UNAMA, the mission expressed serious concern on Tuesday 4th April, which, you know, after its female staffers were prevented from reporting to work in the country's eastern Nangarhar province. It's very difficult to imagine how we deliver humanitarian aid without our female staff, said the spokesperson for the Secretary General Stephanie Dujaric, noting that obviously given the society and the culture, you need women to deliver aid to women. The UN had previously been exempt from a Taliban order issued in December 2022 for all foreign and domestic NGOs to stop women personnel from working across the crisis-stricken nation. After the ban was announced last year, several NGOs suspended their operations in protest, piling further misery on Afghanistan's 38 million citizens, half of whom are facing hunger, according to aid agencies. Since seizing power in 2021, the Taliban have imposed harsh measurements, uh, measures on women, including banning girls from education beyond sixth grade and banning girls and women from working, studying, traveling without a male companion, and even going to parks. A netizen commented, and the Muslims won't speak up against the Taliban. A guy asked, why does the Taliban have a fear of women? Weird. Another wrote, UN and NGOs should suspend their mission in Taliban control country and direct their aid to those countries and people who really need it. Lastly, onto a funny video of a boy accepting a challenge from a grown man. Take a look. Yeah. Make it now you're just showing off. I can't believe my eyes. I can't believe. Now that is how it's done. And that is all on Newsfeed today on Trust TV. Follow us and subscribe to all our social media platforms Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, and Twitter. Bye.